I think for us, trends that have been pretty interesting, it's, it's definitely the year of the screen again. Um, there's some really great examples of technology from LG. Did an amazing job of, of showcasing some really cool, I think, designer and architectural friendly displays, the curved screens and more narrow. Um, LED is, you know, continuing to to grow and uh, you know, nanolumens and electronics are just putting out some amazing technology that uh, we find really interesting and it's really, I think it's a celebration of big displays and, and vibrant colors. If you're going to deploy a digital signage program, um, do your research, first off. Uh, just don't settle on the first piece of technology that you see, do the comparisons, look at the feature sets, understand how that applies to what you're looking to do for the program, for the objectives. Um, you know, go in knowing what you want, you know, I think sort of get an understanding of what you're trying to achieve, see how that aligns with what the software is, is providing you to do, to what the screens are doing. So really do your research. Don't just settle on one piece of technology, look around, uh, experiment with it. Um, it's one of the things that we've done from the very beginning is was we played around with a lot of different technologies. And that's the only way that you really learn for it. And you don't want to get boxed into a solution. You want to have options and, and you want to be able to, to expand upon that and grow with it. So um, shop around play with it and continue to explore. You know, budget is such a, a tricky topic <laughs> and, uh, you know, it could either hurt you or help you. Um, you know, I think a lot of operators start out by obviously wanting to save money and that's a good thing and it's obviously what you want to do, but it also narrows your options for the technologies available to you. Um, you want to make sure that you're putting enough into the budget so you're investing in something that's going to last for the long term. You know, a lot of operators will go in, in technology that's not as perfected for commercial or for professional use, and and they suffer because the technology doesn't last as long. It doesn't give them all the options that they want. They're sort of boxed in, and um, but at the same time too, you can you know you can blow your budget by getting something that is gives you more than what you need. And so it's a very tricky topic to sort of navigate. But I would say, you know, do your research first, get some idea of pricing and then start to build your budget that way. Uh, don't set it before you go out there and start going through the procurement process because you'll end up getting yourself into this position where you just might not get everything that you want. With content, the, the challenges are, it seems a lot of the challenges are at the the end of the sort of rollout of a project, the end of the be beginning of the brainstorming part because budget's usually set based upon hardware and then they think about the creative. And so there's a very small percentage that's left over for creative. And then I have a, a lot of operators and, and, and clients will have a tendency to undervalue content, and they won't understand if, you know the value of the time that is spent on developing the pieces, the time that is spent strategizing on it, and so content always seems to be a last thought. Even though we, we talk about content as king and we talk about the importance of it, it always ends up as the last thought in the conversation. So it really should start off content first, and then start looking at the technology and then start looking at the deployment of it. So content should always be the first part of the conversation, not the last part. This year, we've been, well, since last year, we've been lucky. We've been working with, with Westfield. Uh, a lot of people know them as a, as a mall developer, but we've actually been working with their airport retail group. And so we've been helping them into integrate um, a digital experience that focuses on wayfinding. So helping the traveler better understand how to navigate the space, what restaurants to go to, what shops to go to, where is their gate at, what can they do between the time they enter the airport versus when they're leaving. So building a lot of intelligence and really making this a, a very interesting experience. Um, Merlin Entertainment Group has been an, another amazing uh, client for us. We've been doing a lot of work with Madame Tussauds. Uh, we've worked with them in New York City. We've worked with their Sea Life brand in Kansas City. Um, and that's been a really great relationship for us. A lot of creative freedom that we have with them, uh, especially working in New York City with them as well. Uh, we've done some real signature projects on 42nd Street, so you, what better of a calling card uh, than those guys. And uh, we've also now been working with Kravit, who's a high-end furniture uh, company, and uh, so we're helping them with their showroom experience, making it a bit more friendly with the designer, so the designer has an opportunity to use technology to explore more of the accessories that are offered. And uh, so clients like that, we really have been able to go from new areas that we otherwise haven't topped into before. Uh, DSC is huge. Uh, it's, it's been a huge, ad I mean, they've been a big supporter of us from the beginning, um, but also a good educator for us too. Um, it's always been that conference that we go to to see the vendors, we go to see the technology, we go to listen to, um, you know, even we say competitive agencies of ours, just to learn from them, to talk, to to listen to them, to understand what what they're dealing with, 
And then be able to get on the floor and interact with vendors to meet vendors that we deal with face to face is always great. Um, to learn about new technologies, to explore. And then we take those learnings and apply that back to our own business and then to our clients and make sure that we're advising them properly so that we know everything. So it's, it's, a, big, it's a big part of our business. Uh, it's definitely a must. It's definitely, it's definitely a must. It's, it's DSE is that event that we do set our march around. We set our early part of the year around going to that event because it, it's, you know, all the technologies that are going to be coming out that year are exposing themselves at the beginning of it. And we're able to pull that information, carry those conversations forward, take those those things that we see and apply them to upcoming projects. Um, so it's it's a big it's a big show. Uh, we are speaking today uh, alongside of our client Madame Tussauds. Uh, we're going to be talking about how we work with them to enhance the experience through digital engagement, from creating this dynamic entryway experience to how that strategy has applied itself to integrating into the wax figures, into different new attractions that they have throughout the um, throughout the environment. We worked on a, a project with Jenna Marbles and actually integrating um, an iPhone into the wax figure so you can take a selfie with the wax figure. Uh, we're one of the first groups, I think, to actually create a digital experience with a wax figure. Um, so it's, uh, it's that kind of creativity that we're going to be talking about and, and how we're changing on how guests interact with the, uh, the attraction. DSE, simply amazing.